third one. Okay, third one you know, huh? Okay, if you're married or you're in a serious relationship, you shouldn't be what? Unfaithful. Okay? What what kind of dharma do you give? You give a sense of what? Psychological and emotional security. Okay? To someone who's close to you. Okay? You are, the Buddha say, a, a symbol of what? Of respect, uh, a stability in your community. What's the fourth one? Fourth one is what? Don't tell what? Don't tell lies. Okay? So what do you give? You give truth. Okay? And so on and so forth. Alright? So as you can see, my friend, this is the Buddhist practice you all must do. Uh, Alright? This form can change. There are many more. Uh, okay? I'm sure you sit down and we break into tutorial groups and then you present hundreds and hundreds. Alright? <clears throat> I thought you mentioned one more, which is very common in Buddhist practice. What is that? Very common. It's about diet. What is it? Yes, vegetarianism. Is this a Buddhist practice? Yes, very common Buddhist practice. Okay? True or not? I think there's a vegetarian store here, do you know? Yes. And always I go to all vegetarian stores in Singapore, you always see a Buddha statue there, a Kuan Yin statue there. Is it not? So that's a practice. Okay? So what's the third one? After you've done three sets, then the Buddha say, I will teach you a level of happiness even higher. Okay? The three sets. One or not? You don't want or not? One or not? If you don't want, then the Buddha say, very good. Stop at this level. Buddhism 201 finish. Okay. It's okay. Why? Because the Buddha say, all those who keep three sets, when they die, where do they go? Go where? Go where? Heaven. Yes, heaven. <laughs> Cannot go hell, don't worry. People come out and tell you, say, because you didn't convert to this religion, you die, you go hell, don't worry. Okay? Because Buddha say universal law. Whether you're religion, no religion, you keep morally upright, where do you go when you die? Penthouse. The deep of the If you take refuge, you do all this, you break the five precepts, and you die, then you go to Buddha say, basement A. <laughs> it comes of hell. Eight is for this. Okay? So that's why the Buddha says, keep five precepts. During the Buddha's time, one of these group of men, of people came to find the Buddha and told the Buddha, he says, our teacher said, if you don't convert to our religion, when you die, you go to hell. Okay? So you must believe in me, because if you don't believe in me, okay, what happens? If you die, all of you, all of us, your Buddha, all go to hell. Okay? So they came to ask the Buddha to clarify. Alright? Is this true? Buddha was very wise. Huh? Buddha never said, who's the teacher? Stupid teacher. What's his name? Alright, I'm left up to him now. Buddha very wise. You see how? So the way the Buddha answer, you know, Buddha very wise. Buddha never talk about this. Okay, and that's how you cultivate. When you go to a hall, somebody knock the door and say, hey, better convert. Huh? End of the world coming, you know. They don't die, go hell. What do you say to the person? You go hell. <laughs> <laughs> the Mahayana will say, if I don't go hell, who will go hell? <laughs> uh, that one I think will leave you alone. <laughs> now the Buddha then says, uh, Buddha said, uh, that supposing there is a pond in this village. Okay, you know what pond is? You take this, the first man asks him to take a pot, a clay pot. Right? What do you put in the clay pot? Rocks. Okay? Then you cover the clay pot. Then you take another clay pot, you put oil in it, sir. understand? And you cover that. Alright? Understand? So now you have about how many pots? Two. Two clay pots, understand? One is what? One is what? Rock. Rock, two. The other one is what? Oil. Yeah, oil. Then what do you do with it? Cook. No, don't cook, understand? Remember, there's a pot. Correct. Right. What do you do with the pot? Ah, the Buddha say, the first one, ask the first man, with the clay pot, with rocks, what do you do? 
at the surface, break the foam, break the pot. Okay? Then immediately what happens to the rocks in the pot? They sink to the bottom of the pot. True or not? True or not? Is that true or not true? You're all from NTU. True or not true? <laughs> okay, this is the question now. Then the Buddha said, get all the villagers to surround the pond and everybody shout at the rock. Don't sing. Float la, float la, float la, float la. <laughs> shout as long as you can to the rocks. Will the rocks ever float? No. It will sing according to universal law. Will never float. Understand? The second one, the Buddha said, take the pot with the oil, okay? Get a swimmer to go at the bottom of the pond. What do you do? Break. Okay? And what happens to the oil? Flow. Oh. And as it flows, get the same group of people shout at the oil. You stupid oil, I want you to sing. I want you to sing. I want you to sing. What happens to the oil? Does it sing? It will flow irrespectively of what you want it to do. You want to praise it, you want to condemn it, what will happen? It will flow. Likewise, the Buddha said, I declare, a person who keeps precept is like a pot with the oil on the side. Okay? Breaking of the pot means death. This is a simile. Understand? And when you die, what happens? Your consciousness. Understand? Huh? If you keep sila, or you keep the five precepts, then what happens? You float or you sing? You float. One who does not keep precepts is like a pot with the rocks. Understand? Huh? You break it. The Buddha said you can call all the religious teachers to chant for you. Understand? Huh? Chant what? All kinds of chant. Huh? Di Zhang Mang Jing La, Ha Bei Zou La. Nothing will happen. <laughs> okay? In Singapore, what is it? For 15 minutes. Okay. In Singapore, when, when my grandmother passed away, we went to this Buddhist funeral parlour and the man opened one file. He says, this is the cost, huh? okay? If you pay 50,000, we chant for your grandmother, sure born in what? Western paradise. <laughs> ah, 45,000 sure, you know. <laughs> then he said we don't have money. The time we didn't have money. He said, don't have money, then I take the 30,000 <laughs> package. Why? 30,000 sure reborn human. Oh, that was so bad. <laughs> I said 30,000 don't have. Don't have that money. He said, take the 15,000 one. And 15,000, how? 15,000 maybe. <laughs> The longer, longer one all now, now of course must add inflation. Huh? The funeral fund all now to add. Huh? No need to go and take MPH, all add. It's all about 80,000. Okay? Chan, 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 chan. What happened? The rock can flow. <laughs> <laughs> My dear NTU brothers and sisters, do this practice. Concentrate this one. This one more important than this. We do, the Buddha understand, societies need rights and virtues. Understand, huh? Because to give a sense of regularity, the Buddha says, Buddha always talk about two levels, relative truth, absolute truth. Understand? What is relative truth? Like for example, I ask you, the sun rises where? What direction? East. Sets in where? This depends on where you come from. If you live in North Pole, South Pole, this don't apply. Okay? Now I ask you, uh, this has been recorded from time immemorial. All literature of all different civilizations always write, sunrise from the what? East, sets in the west. But I ask you, absolute truth, does the sun rise and set? Never. It remained constant for the last 46 million years. Constant. If the sun can rise east and west, then uh, our planet will explode with it. <laughs> Buddha said rites and rituals are like this. Relative truth. You must understand where you stand. Okay? You must know the meaning. If it's not good, then the Buddha advised to one of his kingdom. During the Buddha's time, India was divided into 16 states. Okay? 
And the Buddha had one of this, this is called the Republic, the Vishami princes. And you read the Sutta. Okay? And one day the king, the ministers and the king came to ask the Buddha, how do I make this state prosperous? Okay? And the Buddha gave seven principles of good governance. Alright? The rest all you can read. Huh? But one of the, the lessons that the Buddha gave is very important. The Buddha said, we must always, what, what must we do? We must always periodically look at our practices in our country. Take all those that is not good. Understand? Those who are outdated. No use. Remove them. Okay? Put what is what? What is useful and appropriate. Alright? So similarly, my friends, Buddhist practice is like that. Some have gone for hundreds, thousands of years. Alright? No more meaning. Okay? Let's have the courage to look at it and say, we shouldn't do that. Okay? You want to do? Okay, fine. No? But you must not lose sight of this one. What's this one? This is the essence. Right? Now, 10 minutes left. Let me try to cover this quickly. We thought we can have. <coughs> Do you have a question and answer? Have okay. <coughs> okay, if you do this well, then the Buddha will ask you to practice moderation. Moderation in eating and sleeping. How many hours do you all sleep a day? Seven minutes. Good, huh? Okay, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you eat every day? Three meals. Okay, that's good, huh? Moderation. So that's how the Buddha taught. Dealing psychologically. Jack, cultivate what? A heart of giving. Give and give and give and give. Okay, so in the Buddha's past life, the Buddha talks about his previous lives. Huh? But he gave even his life, even his limb. Alright? No problem. Okay? After that, keep your precepts. Then you enjoy a higher level of happiness. Okay? Then, what do you do? Okay? This one? <laughs> higher level of happiness, you know. Moderate your eating and your sleeping. Okay? So you sleep like a log, like that. Come on, you sleep. Huh? Get up, wow. 18 hours later, all that you must drink, 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 drink. Okay? Sleep like you. How many hours? Seven. Very good. Okay? And then after that, then what the Buddha teach? When you're done this, meditation. Okay, I'm shortening this. Actually, there's some more inside. But basically, that's how the Buddha will teach. Like that. Not straight, but you can see meditation is last. Huh? Because after you have moderate eating and sleeping, you can understand why when you meditate, you don't sleep. Okay? The first time when I went for meditation camp, huh? after one hour slept for you, wow, I cannot tahan the eye, you just don't fall, lights are out. And then I, I felt so tired, say not to sleep, but you don't need people sleep ready. <laughs> So if you sleep in meditation camp, it's okay. Because why? You haven't received by what? The discipline of what? Moderation in sleeping. Okay? So I remember when I first attended my first meditation camp, my own, uh, in Ajahn Brahm Monastery. Okay? I took one month of that. Then Ajahn Brahm looked at me like that. He said, say, Sun Han, you don't need to meditate. I said, no, no, cannot. I come here to meditate. I think so. They said every day go and sleep. Wow. So I felt so guilty. You know? I said, no, no, no. So morning I got up, I just eat and slept. Then lunch I got up, eat and sleep. Sleep, 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 sleep. Until the fifth day sleep, until you cannot sleep, you know. They close the plong, your eye open. You know? I was ready for meditation. Ah. So I understood. When you're too tired, you cannot meditate. Okay? So don't force yourself, okay? Then after that you moderate. And after that you see my friends, uh, this is the essence. Okay? Here, quickly sum up. If I can rub this off. 